Hi, let me show you something very special. Xenobots, tiny assemblies of living cells that are programmed to do what you want. Yes, scientists have been manipulating organisms by editing their genetic code in the past, but this is really the first time we built a living machine from the ground up using cells only. Welcome to Quantum Stories. Scientists from the University of Vermont and Tufts University created very recently small living robots from frog cells, called tiny xenobots. They started with an embryo from a frog, took a bunch of cells from it, and assembled them in a very specific way, to make tiny entities that moved in a desired direction. Let's see some footage of the results. You can see how these little creatures moved from left to right, exactly what the researchers asked them to do. It's the first time we are able to make living organisms behave the way we want by just taking cells from scratch. These little robots could be used to deliver drugs inside our bodies, but more on that later. Okay, so let's see how the researchers made this. So our goal is to have a living thing that moves from the left to the right. To do this, the idea is to assemble a bunch of cells. We have basically two types of cells. We have frog skin cells and cardiac or heart cells. Skin cells are passive, meaning they are just there for mechanical structure to hold the robot together. Cardiac cells, on the other hand, are special. They can contract and expand. These cells are the building block of a beating heart. And this will make the robot move. Now the question is how will we combine these two types of cells? There is in fact not a single solution. We could combine them in very different ways. Let's start with a very basic example. Suppose you want to make a robot with two by two cells. Well, we have four different positions and for each of these positions you can choose between two cells. This makes a total of 16 possible solutions. Let's scale this up now with a 10 by 10 cell robot. So if we do the maths, we have 100 cells. For each of these cells, we have two possible cell types, which means we have two to the power of 100 possible combinations. This is a huge number. It's just way too much to test each of them and to see which ones go from left to right. We need to find a smarter approach. The researchers did two things. First, they used simulation. A supercomputer that simulates how cells interact together by respecting the rules about biophysics. This avoids you to do things in real life, and does this much faster. Secondly, instead of trying each of these billion of different possibilities of combining these two types of cells, they use what is called an evolutionary algorithm. Now, what is an evolutionary algorithm? It is a computer algorithm that is inspired by biological evolution, such as reproduction, mutation, recombination and selection. Here is how it works. You make a first population, let's say hundreds or thousands of tiny xenobots, but totally randomly created. You run the simulation and just observe your population. Most of these xenobots will just do strange unwanted things, but some of them will more or less move from left to right. And this is what you want. Therefore, you select these ones, called the best ones or the winners, and reproduce them. This means you make babies by mixing the architectures from the winners, and you also add some mutations to them by randomly changing some of the cells. This new population is called the second generation, and you just run the simulation again on them. And just because they are made from the previous winners, they will just behave a little bit better. If you repeat this procedure many many times, you eventually get what you want. A smart xenobot moving from left to right. And this is exactly what they did. So here you can see some examples of their initial population. One of the final winners is this one. You see how he's able to move from left to right. Now the next step is to make them in real life. This is called going from in silico to in vivo, from the computer to real living bodies. This requires a lot of precise manipulation and thus a lot of time. Let's see what happens if we put them upside down. Well, they're obviously lost. And what's even more interesting is that if you cut them in half, they will heal naturally.
Let's finish this video with some applications. You could use them to deliver drugs inside your body at very specific locations. They could also be used to remove radioactive waste in contaminated zones. In fact, they could be used to move any small object. For example, you could gather microplastics in oceans or travel in arteries to scrape out impurities. This was Quantum Stories. Thanks for watching.